Hi, this is part two of the Fabricator Pro 8 foot by 17 foot build. And last time we, in the last video, the ribs were being assembled with the rib legs and the knee braces. Now that the ribs and the legs, knee braces in the center uh, brackets have been um, installed, I'm putting them into near the location that, it, that the final machine will be set up. Dr. J put some black tape on the ground to indicate where this machine, where he wanted to have this machine because the machine was actually going to be kind of in the center of the uh, the building and he was going to use this machine as an, also as an offload table because he wanted to take the sh large sheets of HDPE and drag them onto the machine from his trailer. Here are all of the ribs stacked up uh, in one place so we can start to lay it out. I'm laying out the x-axis or the long axis rail rests. If you look closely you'll notice that the rail rests are in two pieces on each side. Uh, I needed to do that for shipping purposes and it really doesn't matter uh, that they're, they are in two pieces because the actual rails themselves will hold that together and also the ribs will uh, keep it pretty stable. I opened up the other overhead doors to bring in some light since it was pretty dark as, as noticed by the previous footage. You'll also notice that there is uh, no leg in the, in the middle of the ribs. You can see that there is a bracket, one of those T brackets that kind of look like a upside down triangle to add midpoint support for those very long ribs. But I cut them at the wrong length when I was in Texas. So we're going to be cutting them here. He has a, a chop saw with a, um, a blade that can cut aluminum pretty easily. The X rail rests are cut a little bit off uh, midpoint. So they wouldn't uh, be in the same location on both sides. This will give it more stability. When I was putting up the first rib and putting on the first uh, rail rests for the x-axis, uh, I put it on at that first rib on the L bracket. And that helped me stabilize the first rib. And then the second rib allowed me to make sure that the entire assembly would be pretty stable while I'm putting it together. The overall frame assembly goes together pretty quickly because everything is cut and drilled in Texas. The overall frame for the table at least is almost done. We still have to put the uh, mid midpoint um, supports there but you can start to get to uh, see what the actual size will be. Here's what the frame looks like just prior to putting the midpoint legs on. All of the screws, you'll see that there's only a few screws on each uh, bracket. I did that on purpose. I wanted to make sure that all of the screws, all of the ribs and um, framing would be somewhat adjustable so I can square every connection. You can really get a good sense of how massive this machine is. I'm holding a T-square, or what looks very much like a T-square. Um, it's not its not like the T-squares that I used in, in architecture school, but uh, I'm using this to square all of the legs with respect to the X rail rests. I really like the look of aluminum. It has a, a very nice color to it. Before I actually um, square the frame, I think I am making the top brackets aligned to the X rail rest. Because first I want to make those brackets straight aligned uh, so I can start from something that is already uh, square to the to the rail rest. And then I'll take those legs and I'll square them afterwards. You can see me right there uh, trying to pick up the bracket and align it up to the top edge of the X rail rest. This is probably the most tedious part of the whole build because there's so much um, squaring to do, but it's not actually that important to, um, to get everything perfectly aligned at this point because there's still uh, skirting to put on and leg levelers and the spoil board on the top that will 
put everything into a more solid form. Uh, and at that point, what we do is we eye the alignment to make sure everything is aligned before we bolt all of that stuff down. But this is just to make sure that the overall frame is, is relatively square and uh, as, at least re with respect to the, uh, the ribs, the frame legs, and the X rail rests that go along the length of the machine. Uh, but for the overall machine and making that all square and straight and, um, and aligned, uh, that will come much later. This was still my first day on the build and you can see that the golden hour is here and night is approaching and the mosquitoes are going to start to eat us alive. So we decided to stop at that point and uh, come back the next morning. It's funny, in my experience uh, being mainly raised in Florida, during the winter time, mosquitoes pretty much disappear. I don't feel mosquitoes at all in the winter. And at least the southern states, even in uh, Texas, I didn't feel mosquitoes in, during the winter time. And over here, it's pretty cold. It's uh, at, during the nighttime, it's, it gets down into the 60s and 50s in Wisconsin. And this was, you know, in the, the dead of summer. And mosquitoes were out like crazy at night. There is a lot of water, um, at least in this particular area, there was a lot of standing water. So that could have contributed to it. But in the, uh, we, in the hotel, there were mosquitoes all over the place. I'm not sure if it has anything to do with the Great Lakes or the area. But, and they would bite you. They would, they, would, they would really be aggressive out here. In this part of the build, I am finally attaching the midpoint uh, legs, I guess you'd call it, or supports. Um, the, it's going to the midpoints of the the rail, um, the ribs. And my son, I just opened the garage door or the overhead door on the back of this building. Uh, and my son was doing most of the cutting. I did a couple, some of the cutting and my son did the rest of the cutting. During this entire build, my son was such a wonderful support. He was helping with every part of the build. He not only did uh, some of the camera work, but he did a lot of the cutting and uh, grinding and assembling. I'm getting ready to cut one of those midpoint supports. This is a, uh, a leg length, actually. It's, this is the same um, piece as I would use as one of the legs on the side. Um, and I didn't think about the ribs being lower before I went to Wisconsin and I cut them in such a way that it will work with the existing brackets so I had to cut a little bit off the bottom portion of it so I would still have that same actually no I think I cut it from the top yeah I cut it from the top because I needed those existing holes that I had before to work with the supports you'll notice that when I cut that when I made the cut, I didn't stand in line with the blade. I learned that a while back in uh, the School of Architecture at University of Miami. Um, I was working in the model shop and during part of my training I remember them saying never stand in line with the blade. And from that point on I never did. So I've lear I learned that and, um, and every time I watch uh, video on YouTube, I notice a lot of people don't really heed that uh, safety. Uh, maybe they didn't um, uh, learn that, or maybe it's not something that uh, really is a is an issue. But you know, it makes sense to me, and uh, I'm going to continue doing it. I'm curious, what are your thoughts on that? Leave a comment down below and tell me if you've ever heard of this. In the last video, I had a lot of uh, shaky and uh, non-stabilized video, and you can see that there's a little bit of shakiness here, but this is actually after video stabilization um, in software. So um, because of those comments that were made in the last video, I wanted to try some stabilization techniques for these videos in software. Uh, this is the only footage that I have, so I'm, um, I have to work with it, unfortunately. But uh, and I I still want to make record of this build, 
uh, even though the video may be a little bit shaky but I want to um, uh, try to get as much shakiness out of it so hopefully this uh, helps the GoPro doesn't seem to have this problem so I'll probably be using more of the GoPro footage even though it's not as detailed this video is actually uh, the camera was positioned really far away from the table so I'm having to zoom in a little bit so we're finally taking the gantry off of the the trailer and this is a pretty heavy piece of equipment so it's gonna take a few uh, a few of us to get it on the the frame his Dr. J's son actually came to help out with this it would have been nice to have a forklift at this point but it wasn't too difficult to get it on the on the table we had a little bit of difficulty getting it off of the trailer there was so much structure and uh, wires and cables wrapped around the gantry and unfortunately when we put it on we put it on backwards <laughs> so actually what's facing us right now should be uh, turned around I'm not sure why I why we did this or why I needed to turn it around oh yeah it's because we needed to uh, have access to power the power was on the uh, in relation to this video the power is on the right hand side and also the computer well, that was going to be controlling the CNC was located on the right hand side where you can't actually see that on this part of the video I'm installing some of the skirting uh, on the side of the machine this is uh, MDO medium density overlay uh, a, a specific type of wood that I love to use it's used in the construction industry for concrete forming which is a it's a reusable product and uh, it is a plywood that have that is faced it is heat pressed faced with a material that I'm not sure of but it resists water and uh, I've used it uh, even in outside applications for years and I don't see any dimensional instability at all in this product so I use it all the time in uh, my machines and uh, it's it's a perfect uh, material to use because it has a, an extremely low coefficient of linear expansion so it's not going to move the machine at all uh, in terms of uh, when it gets cold or or hot and even with this material when it gets humid it doesn't change so I love this material and I'm using it for the skirting and I'm using it for the spoil board so this stuff will uh, stabilize the machine uh, to a great extent and you'll see at the end or near the end of this uh, series where I actually get on top of the machine and I try to move it with my body uh, in with my own inertia and it doesn't move at all at this point I think I'm realizing that the gantry is in a location or in in an orientation that um, would not be suitable so um, knowing that the two guys Dr. J and his son has are, have already left it was just me and my son to take care of this reorientation of the gantry so what I decided to do was uh, use the the edge of the frame the um, X rail rest to serve as a as a way to make it so only one side needed to be lifted so I would move one side to one of the rails uh, so it would actually be aligned along the rail and then I rotated the gantry maintaining the other side uh, staying on the rail and I would uh, be able to manage moving it that way so, since I'm only moving essentially half of the weight and I would move the gantry um, when the heavy z-axis is at the opposite side so I wouldn't have to deal with the weight of that z-axis the z-axis is, is quite heavy now I'm installing the the actual rails for the x-axis and I would place the rail on top of the rail rest and slide the rail under the gantry where it meets the rail block uh, the uh, the bearing block 
uh, the rail uh, needed to be lifted just a slight bit so the rail could slide um, within that block. It's really important that these blocks have these plastic protectors in them. If they don't, then uh, the ball bearings inside of these bearing blocks could be liberated very easily. I use the gantry as a way to align the, the rails. First what I do is I make sure that one side of the machine has the rails, the rail aligned perfectly along the rail rest and also as straight as possible. So I'm aligning it um, in a straight uh, fashion and also I'm clamping it down so it maintains the straightness. And then I use the, the gantry to uh, align the rail on the opposite side. That concludes this part of the build. Um, stay tuned for part three. I hope you enjoyed it. Please press the like button if you truly like this video and consider subscribing to this channel. And please leave a comment. I really enjoy reading all of the comments and I try to respond to all of them that I can. Thank you for watching.